When it comes to villains, Disney certainly has some of the baddest bad girls in the fiction. And they aren't just drawn that way. From Queen Grimhild of Snow White and Lady Tremaine of Cinderella to Ursula, Yzma, and Cruella, Disney villainesses are just as recognizable as any princess and have about as much as a following. This isn't just limited to movies though, as many Disney series have had some memorable villainesses of their own. Lord Dominator from Wonder Over Yonder, Shigo from Kim Possible, Queen La from Tarzan, and Dimana from Gargoyles, to, just to name a few. As such, it's not surprising that Star vs. would continue this tradition with a villainess of their own in the form of Eclipsa. Or at least that's how it seemed at the time. That's right, we're talking about the Queen of Darkness in our latest retrospective. From the very moment she was introduced in the series in the episode Into the Wand, Eclipsa was a subject of a lot of speculation, eager anticipation, and division among the fandom. The fact that her cheek marks were spades was definitely cause to be afraid, as the spade symbol can be viewed as the opposite of a heart, and in turn making Eclipsa presumably the opposite of star. The dark markings left on Eclipse's hands and Moon's hands from using dark magic were also unsettling. Eclipse's grandma room didn't help her case either, establishing that she essentially gave up Rhone and her responsibilities in order to be with the monster, who at the time were generally not as sympathetic as they would come to be later on in the show. Eclipse's contract scene with Moon in the Battle for Mini added further this speculation, and the ending left us anticipating and dreading her return in the latter half of Season 3. Thus, we wondered if Eclipsa would be more like the dark and powerful Maleficent. Or would she be, inspired by her wand looking like an umbrella, more like a gothic version of Mary Poppins? Eclipse's reputation proves to be what allows her to shine, stand out, and all in all make her an interesting and likable character. It's Eclipse's actions that show her real character, which is anything but a villain. Ironically, Eclipse's return wasn't about her own villainous actions, but revealed more about the villainous actions done by characters we assumed were heroes, namely the Magical High Commission, as well as some of the previous queens of Muni. Through Season 3, we see Eclipse offer counsel and assistance to Star, and even Moon. She even saved Star and Marco on one occasion from being trapped in the Void. Keep in mind she was also waiting a trial that would determine her fate, and probably could have left at any time. Eclipsa even fought back against and supposedly destroyed her own daughter. Further, she didn't try to take the wand from Star, but instead had it given to her. This certainly didn't sound like the Queen of Darkness some of us imagined, and in this respect, it's what makes her a great character. Defying expectations and what others say or think about you. That is certainly an admirable message, and being reunited with her daughter, essentially getting a second chance, is an excellent form of redemption. But this doesn't necessarily mean she won't be a villain in the coming season. After all, it wasn't just any monster that she fell in love with. By all indications, Globgor is a king among monsters, or at least something to that effect. Glossark even seemed to be concerned about them reuniting, declaring in his brand new voice that he had been warning everyone since he came back. On a related note, how crazy is it that so many of us were wondering what Eclipse's monster love's name was only to have it told to us the whole time? Anyways, despite the fact that Eclipsa, Globgor, Meteora, or in a way, representative of the kind of muni Star wants to make, the fact is, she could face them as enemies. Could Eclipsa have won the trust of our heroes only to betray them? Could she herself end up betrayed or having to betray the one she loves? We're pretty confident these questions will be answered next season. But what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below! Or better yet, check out the Star vs. Amino group. Here you can see all kinds of fan art, fan theories, polls, and more, as well as connect with other fans. We'll continue to do our best to make videos and get you through the dreaded hiatus. And liking and subscribing will be a big help to us. Thanks for watching!